Do not want I came up beside you right here, and I was trying to get eye contact with you, and you swerved at me and said, f you. Let's not swerve at me and try to kill me. Before we get to the meat of the video, I want to give you a quick perspective of what happened just before we turned on the camera. Yes, this is one of those events where I wasn't recording at the initial start of it, but no, don't worry, it's not going to be like one of those fooligan videos where the camera's edited to be on at a different time, and he doesn't, and he doesn't tell you, I have no idea why this person's mad at me, always, people are always mad at me, it's not one of those, sorry, fooligan. <laughs> In the video, you'll see I actually confront him for what he did to me before the camera started, and he doesn't even dispute it. So the background is, this was at Get On ADV Fest uh, in South Dakota, this is an annual event, this is the third one they've done, it's put on by Revzilla and Rever, basically an adventure motorcycle rally at the Sturges Motorcycle Town. The event takes place at the Buffalo Chip, if you know where that is. They've got a bunch of vendors set up there, food, it's a whole cool thing, and test ride, demo, a bunch of my bikes. And of course, the main thing, of course, is to actually get out there and do some riding. They've got GPS routes they put out every day, and so people are off hitting those different trails, different difficulty levels. I was actually riding with a guy named Andrew. I didn't actually know him. It was just somebody who wanted to do the difficult trail. We were both on dual sports, so we thought, why not? That's part of how that event works. You can just kind of meet up with other random people and go for a ride. Andrew was a fun guy. He was on a Husky 501. I was on my XR301. We were pretty regularly running into other side-by-sides and quads, either coming towards you or going away. And basically everyone we met was super friendly. Uh, most people, if they're coming by you, you would you know, give them a hand side, how many people you had coming or going, and they would do the same. And you, everyone was very friendly. I don't want you to get the wrong idea that if you go to this event, that this is something that's normal to happen. I think most everyone's on the same page that, hey, we're all just out here to have a good time, enjoy this beautiful uh, scenery environment, and enjoy these wonderful off-road trails except for my buddy here that I ran into uh, now what happened just before this is we'd come off one of the trails and we got one of these sort of just you know two-lane dirt roads basically we're going down those are boring so I turned the camera off that's why I wasn't filming that bit so as we we're going down this dirt road we get stuck behind a couple side-by-sides it's also super annoying on a dirt bike too because they kick up such a waft of dust and smoke so it's kind of nice to get around them and get to some uh, open air and uh, yes yeah, so, you know we passed several of them all day, including in that same pack. You would roll up behind them, they'd kind of look in the mirror and let you buy. And one or two of the guys uh, with this particular group let us buy no problem. I'm following Andrew on his Husky. All right, it's a good cloud of dust kicking up as you get real close to him. So I'm kind of back a bit. I don't know exactly what happens, but I know he's coming up and at some point I can see he's gone around uh, this blue Polaris. Right after he goes by him, I get the, the dust all of a sudden explodes up. I, I think he must have romped the throttle. At the time, though, I really wasn't sure. Uh, I was like, did someone slam on their brakes? Or, what, what's going on? Why is there suddenly a big uh, kick up of dust? Kind of crazy, because I was, I had a side by side or two behind me. All of a sudden, I'm blind. I can't see anything. I'm trying to slow him down a bit, because I'm like, I have no idea where anything is. I'm just hoping I don't get rear-ended. A very sketchy situation, actually. <laughs> and when the dust kind of settles, I see that Polaris is kind of up there a bit like he's gotten fairly close to Andrew it looks like and I'm like did he get like mad that Andrew passed him and he like hammer the throttle and get up on him is this a road rage thing you know like I said everyone's attitude been so cool I kind of quickly put that aside I said nah should have considered it more so then when I get up behind this blue Polaris I'm looking at him right here and he's got a mirror and uh, basically I'm trying to make sure he can see me in his mirror so I'm staying kind of off to this, the driver's side a little bit not right behind him but over to the side and uh, we're on kind of a straight bit I see him looking down in the mirror and he scoots over. This is the common thing that's been happening all week. This is how people let you buy. So I'm thinking, oh cool, he's letting me buy. Right as I get next to him to pass him, he sticks his head out the window, swerves the wheel at me and says F you uh, or F off. And it almost hits me. So I slam on the brakes, I'm going, what? This is when I turn the camera on. Again, you're gonna see, I'm gonna bring up to him what happened and he doesn't dispute it in the video. So yeah, at this point I turn the camera on and this is what happened. So he just like swerved at me. I wasn't even gonna pass him, I was just kinda getting the side, seeing if he'd let me pass him. Fucking said, fuck off, and swerved the wheel at me. You good, bro? What's wrong? You're not what? Fucking bullshit. What's wrong? I didn't even fucking see him. You guys don't ride our fucking trolls like that. What do, what do you mean? That was fucked up. Hey, I'm I'm sorry, dude. I don't know what's going on. But you you look look. Okay, I don't know what he did, but I came up. Let me let, let me tell you something that were fast. I came up beside you right here, and I was trying to get eye contact with you, and you swerved at me and said "fuck you." So so what kind of? Okay. Fuck that. Am I him? No, I don't give a fuck. I don't want to get fucking. So let's not let's not swerve at me and try to kill me. Okay. Now may I please go around you?
Bro. I don't give a fuck. Bro, just just chill out, bro. Jake, if that was me, I would totally beat that dude's ass. Oh yeah, I want to talk to you about how I handled this situation. But first, let me tell you about cold turkey. Only eating it was as easy as doing it. Well, with today's video sponsor, it can be. That's fume. We deal with fume. Oh. Stopping your bad habits doesn't have to be some voodoo science, crazy stuff you heard from some guy around the corner. It is possible, because with Fume, they look at your bad habit a different way. See, not all parts of your bad habit are bad, just the bad part of the bad habit. So if we remove the bad part out of the bad habit, well then it's just a habit. Savvy? Because Fume has an innovative, award-nominated device that they've come up with. Don't have no electronics, it doesn't use vapor, it's natural and uses flavored air instead of chemicals. And these are all natural flavors as well. So it's not a bad habit, it's a good thing with fume. This thing comes well packaged, it looks good, feels good. The magnetic closure is super fun to play with your fingers there, gives you something to do, and that's helpful for de-stressing and anxiety. And that's particularly helpful when trying to stop your bad habit. Now here's the flavors you'll get with the Journey Pack, all natural flavors, 100% pure plant. You open this thing up, slip these flavor packs in, and they're good for several days. You can turn the adjuster there on the end, the strength of the flavor coming out. And when they sent me this thing, I'm gonna be honest, I thought it was gonna be like pretty weak. If you crank this thing up and do that, that flavor is strong and it's good. The stopping your bad habit is something everyone puts off. It's hard, but switching to Fume is fun and enjoyable. If Fume has served over 100,000 customers with thousands of success cases. There's no reason you can't be one of them. Join with Fume to help break humanity of this bad habit and pick up your journey pack today by going over to tryfume.com slash garden snake and you'll get 10% off. Or scan that QR code that's been in the corner and use code garden snake and you'll get that 10% off when you get the journey pack today. Again, that's try. FUM.com and use code Garden Snake to save 10% today. Just kind of let's recap what happened there. Once I got up next to him, as you can see, he was quite angry. And this was the funniest thing. He almost immediately went into this, this bit, if you couldn't understand what he was saying, that he was he was apparently angered by the fact that Andrew apparently had passed him dangerously. Now, I don't know, I couldn't see it, and I don't think he did. I watched him pass people all day, it didn't seem like he did anything like that. But you know, even if he did, you know, uh, th this is uh, this is a bunch of BS that, that, that he's saying this. I mean, maybe maybe he didn't like how he passed him. Maybe it wasn't a good pass. But he's basically saying this to justify his rage, uh, his road rage, and the way he's behaving. That's what he's doing. Logically, it's pretty broken, right? Oh man, you passed me dangerously. I guess I'm gonna try to kill you and then kill the guy behind you just guilty by consequence, right? Actually, what am I thinking? You know, he, he did that. He did that to look out for us. He's a saint, you know? Uh, by the way, this guy uh, with his Ray-Ban looking glasses and his haircut, uh, I'm just gonna start calling him Dan. These heat wave visuals here. Sorry, Dan. <laughs> so Dan here is, is trying to make this claim that he's did all this because he's so angry. He's, he's upset. How could you be so dangerous? So I try to hurt everybody, yeah. The next sentence out of his mouth is one of the most like telling ones where he's basically telling us to stay off of his trails, you know, in a more colorful way that he says it. That says a lot to me right there. He's probably a local, right? And during this weekend with a big influx of adventure and dual sport bikes in town, he's probably been dealing with this all weekend, getting passed over and over again by other uh, dirt bikes and motorcycles. And for some reason, he's got a chip on his shoulder about it. This guy probably drives a Dodge Ram two inches off of everybody's ass, drinking monsters, just, just. <laughs> Like I said, I tried to speak to him about it. I'll talk more about how I handled that event there at the end. But when I brought up to him what he actually did, obviously the whole, I don't give an F and the whole thing. This is also one of the very telling things, you know, that he said in that conversation. Most of it was a bunch of BS and swearing and anger. But he had a few moments you kind of read between the lines like, okay, these few sentences you said here make a lot of sense for your other actions. You don't like other dirt bikes passing you motorcycles on these roads for whatever reason, and uh, you uh, you don't care. You're just an a-hole. After he took off, he ran up, uh, and my buddy Andrew was waiting up the road because obviously he'd seen I'd stopped. I, I don't think he understood at all what's going on. He shows up there next to Andrew, and he's saying some words. Instead of having a, a, trying to have a civilized conversation like I did, he just gave him the old one-finger salute. Can't blame him, honestly, you know? <laughs> Uh, and then Dan slammed on his brakes. He was outraged. I think Andrew said something about like wear a helmet or something. I thought maybe for a minute there it was like, oh, was it a thing of the, the dirt or, or gravel got kicked up when he went by and, and got hit him in the face, which uh, I mean, he has a glass windshield, I believe. So I don't think that could have happened, but I mean, it could have and probably should be wearing a helmet, honestly, in those things. But that's his complaint. That's what he's mad about. Again, it's a weird way of showing it. Let's uh, kill the guy behind you. But anyways, from there, I ended up in front of him, which I really don't want to, but 
Uh, my buddy Andrew took off, and with the way things were raging, I, I was like, I just kind of followed him, and immediately I was like, I don't know if this is the best place to be. I really didn't want him behind me. We get up uh, to that street, and we turn, and we actually both turned into the same gas station. This was like a gas station, convenience store, like bar restaurant. It probably sold tires, too. While he was there, I mean, I kind of just kept an eye on him because I didn't really trust him. I'd wait here for him to leave, though. Honestly, I don't trust this guy not to do something stupid or shit, like just run him over on his way out. I'll, I'll be careful. He never did anything. He wouldn't even really look my way. We actually ended up in the convenience store together. He was right there inside me, and I kind of kept looking over at him, and he would just, he wouldn't even, not even like a glare up. He knew I was there. He'd kind of do like the real low look and then quickly look back away, and I'm just staring at him, you know? If he wanted to talk, I'm willing to talk. But I just, you know, I kind of look at him smiling. Okay, okay, well, there you go. All right, that's... That was that. Last I saw when I popped back in for something real quick, uh, he was at the bar uh, pounding beers. Probably had been doing that already. Yeah, just a very odd event. And the only uh, thing like that that happened all weekend, everybody else was great. Everyone was very pleasant. Uh, just Dan there, Dan Dan was very upset. He was a very angry person. Now I wanna talk to you guys about how I actually handled this event, my speaking to him like the father I am, speaking to a child throwing a tantrum. I know a lot of you, like what I've just explained happened and the way Dan acted there would have just jacked old Dan right in the face. I mean, he's a little guy, look at him. A big part, number one, this, this, is, this is probably the most important one, is I have no idea what this guy is about or what he's capable of. In fact, the very little information I do have of him is that he just tried to swerve his, uh, you know, several thousand pounds side by side at me going down a road uh, for something I didn't even do. That kind of gives me a little bit of a level of where this guy's at. I don't know if he's gonna try to run me down. I don't know if he, he's got a, a, a gun on him. Not to mention, he had several other guys he was with in his little group that were right there with him. You're taking a massive gamble. You have no idea what these people are about, what they're capable of. And for all I know, Dan could have been stocky and strong and maybe he would have kicked my ass. Uh, maybe he's the kind of guy that he'd knock you down and then just keep stomping you, hurting you. You've seen World Star, right? You know, people don't uh, have any respect for anybody when they get into a fight with someone these days. I mean, I've shown this video to a few people. I've even had people say, well, you should have pulled a piece out, your piece out and shot him. Don't you carry a piece on you, Jake? That doesn't matter, don't worry about that. But if that's your mindset, then you shouldn't carry one on you. Let me tell you that. I've got a family, I've got children and a wife I'd like to make it home to. Uh, maybe I would have pummeled Dan and kicked his ass. Let's say I even could. Now that brings me to my second point. What's the goal here? Overall ultra goal, and you gotta think real high level here. The goal is to not have Dan road rage on other motorcyclists, to have him drive him off the road. Now if Dan is freaking out and yelling at me and I hit the same level he's at, it doesn't matter what he's done before that, if I come at him with the same level, little Dan brain is gonna process that as he was justified in what he did. Now, I have children, okay? They throw temper tantrums, sometimes they even throw something at me. And you have to tell them, that's not okay, you can't do that. Look, it'd have been easy to get mad at him. This guy just tried to hurt me. I mean, potentially kill me, and then has the, the nerve to yell and get shitty with me about what he did. Sure, I mean, yeah, there's, there's that part inside of me that's like, just jack Dan right in the teeth. Again, big goal is to make Dan not do this behavior in the future. And the only way you're gonna get through to him, you gotta be down here and, and potentially make him seem like an asshole. That's kind of part of what it is but it's, it's the only way it might get through to him. It's not gonna get through to him right there, and it might never get through to him. The only chance you have that it might is if you take this approach. And by taking that approach, Dan might be sitting there later going, you know what, I'm an asshole for how I acted. He may never admit that out loud, or at all, but if there's a chance, that's the way to get that voice in his head to ever speak, to think, man, maybe I shouldn't have handled it that way. And the next time he's going down the road and some bikes fly by, maybe he'll be a little more calm. I know most of you guys are raging at the comments at me right now. There's no way that guy's a piece of shit and he always will be. You're probably right, but I mean, I gotta give it a shot. And then he said, ultimately de-escalating a situation is such a better idea than, ah, let's fight, you know? <laughs> I mean, where does that go? What's the good scenario there? Let's say I'm just the baddest dude of all and I whoop him and his friend's asses probably wouldn't happen, but let's say it does. What are they gonna do next time they're on the trail and some bikes go by? What are they gonna think? At the end of the day, it's easy to feel justified, fight with this guy, yell at him, do all this stuff, but it's not gonna win anything. I wanna make it home, I don't wanna die, I don't wanna get shot by some random person, and I wanna try to maybe get through to him. As far as I'm concerned, that's the only real approach. You may not agree, and that's fine, I understand that. Keep in mind too, 
I'm 38 years old. I've been riding motorcycles since, uh, what was I, 19 when I bought my R6? So yeah, I've been doing this for a while. <laughs> I'm just out here to have a good time, enjoy this beautiful place and make it home safely. Probably seems like I'm stretching this into like this whole thing, but I thought it was important to talk about. I see so many road rage videos these days and a lot of riders too, when they first get into riding, it's so easy to be like, this person tried to kill me. So often not, it's just dumb drivers being stupid, you know, no one's trying. Most people are out there like, gonna go kill some motorcyclist. Dan was that day apparently, but uh, or at least he got there. <laughs> Try to keep a level head though, you know, it's gonna, it's just better in the long run. It's it's the better scenario. Fighting with somebody in traffic because you think they cut you off or they did and screaming at them isn't gonna make them not do that in the future, if that makes sense. They're just gonna be like, wow, motorcyclists are assholes. That's all they're gonna think. Someone cuts you off rolling up next to him being like, hey, that was a little dangerous what you did there. It really scared me and you know, I, I, I don't wanna die out here, you know. Those little words like that, uh, so simple. Also, the, the, it's this funny thing too of apologizing for things that you didn't really do with that other guy. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't know what he did. I'm so sorry, you know. This video is probably gonna be uh, demonetized. If you do wanna help support this channel, I do have a Patreon, it's just $1 a month. You have full access. These videos come out earlier uh, without ads on them. And there's a Discord that you really should join. Come in there and chit chat with me. We'll have a full version of this video with that event tied into it uh, coming up soon. It was wonderful riding out there at the Black Hills. Thanks uh, to Rev Rever and Revzilla for putting on that event and having me out there. It was a wonderful time despite that one incident with uh, the old Dan boy there. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next video. I don't give a fucking love it.